Good afternoon, I'm Nick D for VIS. Welcome to the Dev Diary 28 for the New Order of the Last Days of Europe. And today we're talking about the new Russia, where it's basically going to be a big Russia rework specifically for the warlords, the regional and super regional stages. But welcome everyone, my name is Ugly Doll. I'm writing this with me is Korn. We are the co-leads for Russia since about late 2022. Over the past nine months, Korn and I have been cooking up something behind the scenes, and at long last we have made enough progress to start showing off our plans for Russia. And what better way to highlight a classic region than with a classic leak? Today we bring you, after two years hiatus, a new di development diary. It's it really has been uh, two years. The last one was Guangdong, I think. Uh, if you indulge me a bit of preamble, Russia has never has been fairly quiet these last few years, as many of you know. Yet our activity has never was never a lack of energy. Instead, we consistently dealt with the dilemma: How do we take a region as beloved as Russia and adapt to the standards of modern TNO? Ultimately, Korn and I chose to zoom out and focus on the game and play as our way forward. Russia's biggest weakness was always been the late game. For many nations, the period after the Smuda and and slow, lacking in events, and very mechanically light. Most unifiers have at, at most one mechanic over the, the six year stretch. The majority of gameplay, for the worst offenders, it can be a slog. We've seen it. We've even seen people complain about this in multi-page reviews of TNO playthroughs. The final span of Super Regionals is especially short. Most trees for this two-year period last a year at most. This was never intended. The short game is a result of a crunch. The breakneck speed of TNO rushed Russia development that gave us much of a good and weird modern Russia. So we want to try our best to correct it. We can't go uh, at the speed they did, but we are working on in this series of updates making something better. So, uh, welcome to the new Russia. Regional has a few changes in terms of structure with all trees remaining m more or less in identical. One well, major change is the removal of the diplomacy tree. This is integrated directly into the World Awaits mechanic, which is described further later in this diary. Otherwise, uh, the main changes here will be mechanical, as typically a new exclusive mechanic, along with the new overarching mechanics, are integrated into the focus tree and events. The largest structural change will be to Super Regional. The short uh, final tree in current gameplay, this tree will re be will will be replaced with something more fitting for the final moments of gameplay. Not an epilogue, but a true climax. Uh, we're working at turning this to this. I'll show you guys. This is the old, this is the Amur Super Regional Tree. I recognize it because uh, this is the holding the Congress. This is uh, extending the plant, the development plan to Siberia. And then this is hunting down the, like, the traders. You can either unleash the black shirts or unleash the OOB. And then, yeah, you could, guys could probably tell I played a lot of them. Uh, but then this is the new uh, Super Regional Tree. It's blurred out, so we don't know what it is. But I, I can't make any guess. But Super Regional will be a moment of crisis, the final moment of state building, which solidifies your government and prepares it for the war ahead. Not every nation will have a dramatic finish, but all should feel more conclusive within the context of TNO 1. To accomplish this, the timing of Super Regional Regional will be changed, with a shorter Regional and a longer Super Regional. However, there's another set of changes, one which I barely touched on, which will be coming much more quickly, and for this, I pass the baton to Korn. And Mechanics. Hello, Korn here. As uh, Ugly Doll stated previously, our main focus on Russia's development is gameplay and specifically mechanics. Russia now has few mechanics that apply to all unifiers, but most of them, except for the Smuto, which is a fairly new addition, are old and do not match the current standards of Tito content. Many of these mechanics, such as the Warlord Regional Development mechanics, are incredibly bare bones, a set of mostly identical decisions that the player uh, takes over and over again to gain bonuses with little variety or flavor. This led to several jarring oddities like Taboritsky investing in anti-poverty -pro programs or the Aryan Brotherhood being able to gain external investments despite being despised by uh, everyone else in Russia. Other shared mechanics like the nuke mechanic didn't actually do anything to impact the game. As such, Ugly Doll and I started with the base of shared mechanics, two which you uh, will see here. However, before getting the nitty gritties of these mechanics, I would like to go over our designed philosophy while, when making these mechanics, which can be summed up in a few words words, dynamism, uh, intuitism, and impact. Dynamism is important as while these mechanics will be used by every unifier, it's important that we differentiate the experience for different unifiers. Xandov's Ultra Visionary should have a different experience compared to Tom's Decembrists. 
to provide an example. Intuitiveness is also crucial because we need these mechanics to be easily understood and interacted with by the player to avoid confusion and frustration, especially as this will be many players' first experience with TNO. Uh, impact is arguably the most important part of our design philosophy since the last thing we want is for these mechanics to be ignored by the player due to them not having a meaningful impact on the game. All that being said, keep in mind that we're still in the process of development, and as such, uh, some things may be different upon release of the content shown in the dev diary, including any hard numbers for the purpose of balance and improving these mechanics. Without any further ado, I'm happy to show off the first new mechanics for the for the new Russia, Heart of the State. Uh, the first mechanical I'd like to show off is Heart of the State, I have it right here. Uh, but Russia lies where it can be on repair, shattered by foreign invasion and internal division. The largest nation on Earth has devolved into chaos and never ending cycles of uprisings, collapse, and revolts that have shattered every attempt to unify the nation ever since that fateful day in 1943. But this cannot continue. It will not if we rebuild the heart of our state, our legitimacy. We must prove to the world and far, far more importantly, to our own people that we're the real, genuine government of Russia by raising our popular support, institutional support, control, and legacy. Uh, we can do more than uh, the mere state building, but we can also need to justify our rule of Russia via claims, the reason behind our legitimacy. If we do those thi these things, Russia may climb out of the pit of despair into the glory of unity once more. And so, uh, the mechanic representation of each uh, unifier's legitimacy and the evolution from the disorganized local governments, scarcely different from warlords that exist in 1962, to functional, effective, and capable governments of the United Russia. And uh, this screenshot and all the other Heart of State screenshots was taken from Irkutsk in 1962, which serves as a good example of everything the state has to, the heart of the state has to offer. So yeah, here we go. So. Irkutsk has the USSR remnant and the Arabs of Ukraine. We'll see uh, what those mean. But they have uh, more than half heart in legitimacy, little stronger in institutional strength, little less on control, and uh, way less on legacy and popular support. By uh, popular support, somewhat self-explanatory, rep representing the people's support of the current government, gra granting increased amounts of stability and war support. Let's see if I uh, get it right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, popular support represents the people's support for our government. Without it, uh, we cannot claim to truly represent the wishes of the Russian people, forfeiting the people's loyalty to our rivals and enemies, and just give stability and war support. Uh, but then institutional strength represents the strength of the state's institutions, prov providing more political power and cheaper administrative costs, and a faster increase of the administrative efficiency societal development. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Uh, rep represents the capacity of our institutions to respond to the needs of our people and complete state objectives. And uh, then control. Control represents how much co control the government can exercise over its territory, what penalties the taxable population, security policy effectiveness, and recruitable population increasing as control decreases. Uh, yeah. I got it first try. <laughs> but uh, controlling a territory is non negotiable if we wish to remain in power. And so, with the 51%, you can see it's a decrease in taxable population, security, and recruitable population. But then, uh, legacy legacy represents the, society, the social capital gained by living up to the legacy of, of uh, past Russian power, offering more power the higher it is. Uh, it also ties in um, another mechanic you'll see later. Uh, you may wonder what legitimacy is for, as for the other four variables already provide many effects. Legitimacy itself is an average of four previous variables. It does not offer any direct effects, however, it impacts other mechanics, including the one I'll go over next. Uh, let's find it. Um, so like, yeah, here we go, legitimacy. Without legitimacy, we're an empty husk of what was once Russia. And uh, the next mechanic that's going to be talked about is the list of cards. At the bottom of the... Go uh, is it GUI or do you just pronounce it together? Uh, I'll say GUI. These are claims, reasons for why this specific regime is the rightful government of Russia. Think of claims like perks in RPG, being able to be uh, selected if the player meets necessary requirements. Uh, some unifiers will start with claims, such as Akutsk, Tyomen, and Omsk. However, most unifiers will not have claims at the start of the game. and. Um, and must earn claim slots as they progress, allowing the, pay the player to select an available claim to add. Uh, let's see the claims for Kutsk. 
So, yeah, USSR Remnant and the heirs of Bukharin. And so, back here, we have the World Awaits. The next mechanical I'd like to show you is the World Awaits. Uh, let me pull it up. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is the mechanic you can see. We have the, the we have Washington, Tokyo, and then other major powers. And then we have the collaborators, partisans, and, uh, like, the exiles, like the white Russians who fled. By uh, let me see. Uh, the World Awaits mechanic is serves as a substitute for the various po foreign policy trees and current content, allowing us to shorten the regional phase to allow for the longer super regional uh, period ugly doll discussed earlier, also giving the player much more freedom in their uh, foreign policy. Uh, in the World Awaits, there are uh, three government groups, one on top, the United States, the Empire of Japan, and minor nations, along with three private groups, one on the bottom, collaborators, partisans, and exiles. There are a certain number of diplomats that can be assigned to these groups, and up to three can be assigned to the same group. These diplomats accrue influence, which can be spent on decisions, providing various benefits, such as gaining equipment, economic benefits, societal development, increasing stats for heart of states, or other, uh, or other rewards. Some unifiers will have easier or harder time increasing relations with certain groups than others. As an example, Amur will have a much easier time gaining favor with Japan, while gaining influence with the United States will be a Herculean task for them. If you remember back to uh, when I was talking about legacy in the heart of state, it will give more influence with every private group the higher it is. And then uh, the unifier. Uh, uh, when and where should you expect to see these changes? With our first update, we'll start small with just one warlord, so this restructuring will take time. If it will take many updates to see restructuring applied to all the warlords, this plan also doesn't overwrite previously announced uh, reworks, which are still slated. Those will be developed in the format. With entirely new content, this means Sablin, Tumen, and the AB reworks are still on the table. So what nations have we chosen to move into this new format first? We have chosen to bring Amurn th as the first nation under this new scheme. In the up upcoming update, Rod Zavesky will have to face the unpopularity of his fascist ideals in Russia head-on, as he attempts and struggles to integrate central Siberia and finally washes himself of his unclean past. Expect more to come in future leagues. So why Amur? We had a few goals and minds with the choice. We want a nation with few paths, since uh, building mechanics would be much of this update. We also wanted a nation that would benefit of most for having the additional mechanics that the face of reply would provide. While having a strong enough narrative that we could be certain keeping the first two thirds of the gameplay intact. After doing an extensive dive through the nation's game, it became clear that Mur was far was far in the way the best pick for our first test. A narratively strong, mechanically weak nation with a single path, perfect for polishing and perfecting. A Far East nation also hip helps us fix some of the problems with the Far East's gameplay, but hey, you've gotten so much from us already, you need to wait a bit to see more. But we aren't going to leave you with just the cliff notes. I'm sure you'll uh, love an example of the mechanical depth we're working on, uh, gi uh, giving through this facelift. Now there's corner to discuss another new mechanic that's one exclusive to uh, Mer, the alphabet of fascism. I'm going to make a pause just to get some water, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, sorry for that little pause, uh, but the alphabet of fascism, and let me pull up the, yeah, here we go. Russia, after decades spent beneath the heels of degeneracy, has been misled, forced in the dark of the woods and away from the white light of fascism. Throughout history, most fascists have enlightened their people before taking power in a show of dominance. Constantly, Rodzevsky, forced to revive his nation from the brink, can only work in reverse. Um... In the lands we have freed from the revolution, our goals is to increase the levels of fascist acceptance while keeping local dissatisfaction at a minimum. Our greatest tool in this is our tongues. Fascist movements must continually shift their rhetoric to capture the manorites while energizing the base. A muted tongue will not offend the dissident minds, but it also its appeal is also limited, limiting change in either local dissatisfaction or fascist acceptance. In turn, brazen speech incites both groups to actions. Uh, for, finally, Bolotov sits beside Rotsovetsky, asking for further chances, more control. His heavy-handed violence may help us in many ways, but every inch we give him um, he may use against us in the future. You can see uh, your rhetoric is currently low with a uh, plus two monthly increase to uh, fascist acceptance and uh, plus zero to local dissatisfaction. If we are uh, if we were to prepare for the upcoming struggle we must have 75 uh, fascist acceptance by 1969 and um, 
Uh, each of these uh, three variables also impacts the heart of state mechanic that I went over earlier. But these variables also play a deciding role in Rodzevsky's new, new rework to Super Regional and the fate of Russian fascism. There's also another part of the mechanic, rhetoric. Rhetoric is the main method of raising fascist acceptance, uh, increasing as rhetoric becomes more extreme, but it comes at the cost of uh, raising local dissatisfaction should rhetoric become too extreme. As such, changing your rhetoric may be the nece may be necessary to maximize uh, fascist acceptance and minimize dangerous local dissatisfaction. And uh, this uh, lore down here is basically Stalin is now going to remain relevant in Soviet politics for much of the 1930s and even briefly have complete control in the last years of the Second World War. And Stalinism is no longer just a French ideology, but a competing vision of communism, which has led to splits of factions and communist parties worldwide as both sides fight for dominance. But most of the stuff is this. Uh, the lore of the World War Two before uh, the start of TNO. But uh, so, how did you like the stuff, Derry? I hope it brought you some holiday cheer. It certainly brought, brought uh, both of us, along with everyone else in the Russia team, much joy to uh, show off all the things we built for you. Special thanks to Chris Sim for the code work, which pushed the Russia team forward while the two of us were finishing up the ruin. We've shown off a lot, but more remains to be seen. You might be uh, seeing more from Corn and I sometimes in the future. Until then uh, I hope to see you, I hope you all keep in touch for what should be an exciting 2024 I have a feeling 2024 is going to be a lot of drops and a lot of releases hopefully knock on wood that's a big big if 2023 was honestly very disappointing we only got the ruin and not much else I think actually we might have got Guangdong this year but it's it's been so long like Actually, I, I, I think I gotta retract the statement. We got Guangdong, um, we got Guangdong late 2022, because I remember playing it in my, fr in my dorm in college first year. Then this year was the ruin, and we'll see what awaits us in the spring of 2024. But I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.